The NFL is currently standing atop the American professional sporting world. Its popularity is at an all-time high, and the teams are practically printing money. It is a good time to be in the professional football business for now. That's the thing about good times, though. More often than not, they don't last forever when it is usually because there is a huge problem bubbling under the surface that gets glossed over. Something that just slips through the cracks because the powers that be are so blinded by their success. That is exactly what is happening in the NFL. And while it may not seem like it, the NFL is at risk big time. Not because interest is waning yet, but because it has a serious culture problem. Not in the sense of demographics or anything like that but the explosion of diva-type behavior that is becoming more and more common around the league. What should be particularly troubling about this budding trend is that it is not limited to one specific action, like touchdown celebrations or social media behavior. Instead, this new mentality presents itself in almost every facet imaginable, some more severely than others. And while it is entertaining to follow along with, it is also creating a ton of strain between the NFLPA and the owners, and it looks like we could be headed towards a work stoppage. Let's take a look at all the factors at play here. One of the most problematic manifestations of this new age of player empowerment, at least from an ownership perspective, is the way that today's players treat their contract situations. This summer was loaded with holdout talk, and while generally speaking it is the more talented players that actually have the leverage needed to hold out. This year's crop was particularly gifted, bona fide stars like Ezekiel Elliott, Michael Thomas, and Jadavian Clowney were all truant for various parts of their off-season responsibilities. Whether it was OTAs or training camp or whatever, these guys were all insistent on showing their teams how unhappy they were with their deals. This isn't necessarily a surprise, though. There has been a story tradition of NFL players holding out long before any of this came about. Whether it was Eli Manning refusing to play for the San Diego Chargers or John Elway threatening to play baseball, there has been no shortage of contract controversies. But fortunately for these guys' respective teams, they were able to work out these disputes in one way or another. New Orleans and Michael Thomas penned a five-year extension worth $100 million with $61 million guaranteed. Dallas waited around a while but ultimately gave Zeke a huge six-year $90 million extension and got him on the field before the season started. Houston ultimately decided on shipping out Clowney to Seattle for Jacob Martin and Barkevius Mingo in a 2020 third-round pick. So while the Texans did have to ship out a quality talent, at least they were able to bring in a couple of guys that will help to fill some of the gaps on their roster. What's crazy is these are just the holdouts that went well for the teams this year. Out of Los Angeles, Melvin Gordon ended up sitting out well into the regular season while waiting for a new deal. In Washington, it looks like offensive tackle Trent Williams, who by the way has been selected to seven straight Pro Bowls, has every intention of sitting out until his contract gets ripped up and rewritten. Although considering the middling status of the Washington franchise, Maybe Williams just wants to be anywhere else, and I don't think anyone would blame him for that. Anyway, all of this comes off of a season when we saw franchise players like Le'Veon Bell literally sit out the entire year during a contract dispute, and this is a troubling trend for the NFL. We are all aware of the physical risks that NFL players put their bodies through week in and week out, and it is true most of them do have a short career window to try and rack up as much earnings as they can. But the heartbeat of the NFL's fan base is a blue-collar, common man type of people, and watching millionaires squabble with billionaires over money is definitely starting to put a bad taste in a lot of fans' mouths. The problem is a lot of today's players are so wealthy already that they can afford to defer their paychecks in the hopes of netting a bigger payday down the road. And at the end of the day, it is the fans that lose. Another piece of today's players' ability to diversify their revenue streams and increase their yearly earnings is how they use social media. Social media also ties into all of the contract disputes that have been popping up left and right. Instead of having to call a press conference or go through their agents to voice their displeasure, players have the ability to shout out to the entire internet right at the tips of their fingers. Like Melvin Gordon retweeting fans who were tweeting comparisons between him and his replacement, Austin Eckler, during his holdout. Either they go through their own social media, or they do something to grab the attention of other people's social media knowing it'll go viral. Like when Stefan Diggs, a malcontent in Minnesota, wore cleats with a popular meme printed on the side of them that simply states, I, I'm a head out now. The crazy thing, too, is that afterwards the players are usually coy with the media and act irritated that they are questioned about something that they so obviously did to draw attention to themselves and their grievances. It seems like it is just way too tempting for players to use social media to stir the pot in these situations, and it is creating big-time distractions for their teams. The challenges teams face with overseeing the players' social media presences 
isn't just limited to these kinds of triggered outbursts. Some guys seem completely unaware of what is and isn't appropriate social media behavior. At this point, Antonio Brown is an obvious example. Anyone with even an inkling of interest in the NFL is sure to have heard about at least one of his recent social media outbursts. Whether it was him and Cleveland Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield trading digital jabs or Brown mouthing off about all the money his behavior cost him in Oakland and New England, there has been no shortage of talking points for those interested in sourcing his name. The incidents have gained so much publicity that people have almost entirely forgotten that the former All-Pro's fall from grace in Pittsburgh actually started on social media when he went on Facebook Live during a closed-door post-game speech which was explicitly against head coach Mike Tomlin's wishes. That was undeniably a turning point for Brown in Pittsburgh, and it has since spiraled so far out of control that his future in the league is now in doubt, despite him being one of the most talented wide receivers around. What's particularly interesting about the team's inability to dictate how their players use social media is that the teams themselves and the NFL as a whole seem to have a rather archaic view on how to even use it themselves, and it hasn't been for a lack of trying. There really isn't a single social media service that the NFL hasn't yet partnered with, for short or long-term form programming so far. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, Snapchat, and now back to Twitter via Periscope. You name it, the NFL has at least tried it. But where the league has run into trouble is, it seems to want vertical control of all of the digital content that comes out of its product. So while the NBA deploys a laissez-faire, free market type of policy, which allows fans, players, teams, media, whoever, to post whatever NBA content they want, if users post NFL content, more often than not, it will get taken down and reported for copyright infringement. The NFL does this to try and maximize the profits it rakes in via social media advertising and digital partnerships. But based on how digital marketing is helping the NBA gain ground on the NFL, it looks like the NFL may be missing the boat on this one. It is entirely possible that the value of allowing fans to share content and generate an organic buzz around the league's moments is actually more valuable than just selling advertising space. And that is exactly what we are seeing happen with the NBA. Every time there's a viral hoops moment, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat, if you're, you know, one of those people that still uses Snapchat, don't we use TikTok now? But anyways, one of them is buzzing with hilarious posts from relatively anonymous users. And as a result, these are the moments that get talked about and remembered far more. And all these ridiculous social media controversies and policies tie right into the biggest problem that is looming beyond all of the NFL's success. The collective bargaining agreement negotiations, which need to be resolved by the end of the 2020 campaign and will surely include a variety of personal conduct policy discussion, including, you guessed it, social media. But the depths of the upcoming CBA are far more treacherous than just discussing who can post what, when and from which platform. There are some very contentious trade chips that both sides are stubbornly clinging to, which could easily result in a strike or a lockout if they aren't careful. The two categories where these issues fall are pretty simple, economic and non-economic. The economic issues boil down to exactly what you expect. Both sides want more money. In this case, there are two primary aspects to watch for. First, how the parties decide to adjust the proportions of the revenue-sharing model. The current CBA provides that the player's share of revenue average at least 47% of all league revenue over the 10-year life of the deal. That will obviously be a sticking point for the NFLPA, because they feel that, at the very least, if they can't get fully guaranteed deals, the revenue share needs to increase. The second part, which is one of the least talked about but most important aspects to the owners, is replenishing their supply of stadium credits. The NFL CBA traditionally provides NFL owners the ability to take money off of the top of the revenue pile before splitting it with players if they wanted to use it for stadium construction or renovation. And while they were still allowed to do so under the previous CBA, they effectively ran out of money already. So the players actually have some pretty significant leverage heading into these negotiations. Now, the non-economic side of these negotiations is where it gets way more complicated than just sorting out how the NFL wants players and fans to use social media. Interestingly, the two issues are pretty deeply intertwined. The personal conduct policy and the NFL's judiciary process. The players have long lamented the fact that Commissioner Roger Goodell essentially has complete control over player discipline, especially after Goodell instituted a personal conduct policy in 2014 without a collective bargaining negotiation with the union. Goodell acted hastily in the aftermath of the Ray Rice domestic violence video leaking, and ever since that point, the players' livelihoods have been at Goodell's mercy. And to be fair, they have a point. Goodell is essentially judge, jury, and executioner, and it seems like there is little consistency as far as what transgression warrants what punishment. Unfortunately, in these kinds of negotiations, 
It is nearly impossible for either side to get what they want entirely. So to some degree, they kind of have to pick what is really important to them. And there is one side to the personal conduct policy that the players have made abundantly clear that they want addressed, the drug policy. The punishments that the CBA has for marijuana violations are extreme and outdated, and some of the more progressive owners have even suggested eliminating marijuana testing altogether. The players believe that this would be a huge step for them towards helping to mitigate the painkiller crisis that has swept through their fraternity. It does seem like the penalty for marijuana use will at the very least be significantly decreased, if not eliminated, but it will for sure come at the cost of a concession, so it will be interesting to see what the two sides agree on. It would be foolish to say that the NFL is at risk of disbanding anytime soon, the league is simply doing too well. But if the powers that be don't start to think a little more progressively about how they treat both the players and issues, like the personal conduct policy, social media policies, and the all-important upcoming CBA negotiations, the league is putting itself at a huge risk. Hopefully they will be able to find a middle ground, but if the negotiations stall, look out. There could be a serious work stoppage coming. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, feel free to click the subscribe button down below. If you like the video, then like the video, we'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, don't forget to tune into TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll see you next time. <laughs>